welcome back my students dr ogwe here and this is the continuation of the previous lecture and the notes of this video are in the description of the lecture we are studying physiological characteristics of cardiac muscle that's the learning objective number first we studied five uh, physiological characteristics and now in this video we are going to study the physiological characteristic number sixth seventh and eighth total there are 10 physiological characteristics and this video is about this diagram really mainly so let's begin so let's begin physiological characteristics of cardiac muscle number sixth it states cardiac muscle requires calcium in extracellular fluid to contract now what does this stadium mean now what that does this stadium mean look at this diagram now look at this diagram this is the diagram of a cardiac muscle cell this right here is the sarcolemma or the plasma membrane of a cardiac muscle cell clearly and this is the extracellular fluid outside the cell and this the cytoplasm so this part right here this part right here and this part right here is the cytoplasm of the cardiac muscle cell clearly so let's begin so let's begin as you can see this plasma membrane or the sarcolemma of the cardiac muscle cell it forms a uh, you know it forms a u it forms a u inside the cytoplasm it forms a u this u type this dip is called as the t tubule of a cardiac muscle cell it's called a T tubule of a cardiac muscle cell clearly the diameter of this is five times more than is five times more as in skeletal muscle cell this t tubule is also present in a skeletal muscle cell but the diameter of this t tubule in cardiac muscle cell is five times more is five times more so the which implies it is you know understood which implies this t tubule in cardiac muscle cell is 25 times more in volume than skeletal muscle cell than skeletal muscle cell because we know the volume of a cylinder it's like a cylinder isn't it a cylinder really pi r square d radius square uh, square of the radius that's called 5 into 5 that's 25 times that's 25 times so the volume of the t tubule in the cardiac muscle cell is 25 times more as in skeletal muscle cell as in skeletal muscle cell now let us begin whenever the action potential whenever the action potential reaches sarcolemma when our this action potential reaches sarcolemma that's plasma membrane of the cardiac muscle cell it goes into the cytoplasm it goes into the cytoplasm through these t tubules through these t tubules so action potential comes it goes inside it goes inside and when this action potential goes inside it causes the release of calcium it causes the release of calcium through these channels these are rhinodian receptors rhinodian receptors these are present in sarcoplasmic reticulum these are present in sarcoplasmic reticulum so when the action potential comes it results in the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum or from in the cytoplasm in the cytoplasm what is the sarcoplasmic reticulum it is the endoplasmic reticulum of a cardiac muscle cell and when this calcium is released from these rhinodian receptors these calcium give signal and this calcium result in the contraction of a cardiac muscle cell so far this is exactly what happens also in a skeletal muscle cell action potential comes it signals sarcoplasmic reticulum it releases calcium and calcium causes contraction this is the same this happens in the cardiac muscle cell it also happens in a skeletal muscle cell but in addition to this calcium that is present in the that comes from the sarcoplasmic reticulum there is another calcium that comes from the extracellular fluid there is another calcium that comes from the extracellular fluid and this calcium comes goes into the cytoplasm and this calcium plus this calcium they together signal the cell result in the contraction result in the contraction of a cardiac muscle cell so this calcium this extracellular calcium is important for the contraction of a cardiac muscle cell this extracellular uh, this extracellular fluid calcium is not required in a skeletal muscle cell because skeletal muscle cell contraction only depends upon this calcium it does not depend upon this calcium clear so what does this calcium do it forms bond with troponin troponin and that results in the cross bridge formation cross bridge formation and it results in the contraction it results in the contraction these cross bridge formation we uh, studied these in uh, you know um, skeletal muscle physiology clearly so this is how a cardiac muscle cell contracts this is how a cardiac muscle cell contracts that's what i am saying cardiac muscle requires calcium in extracellular fluid to contract this is that calcium this is that calcium now the question is how does this cardiac muscle cell relaxes you know when there is a relaxation when there is a relaxation calcium is released 
This calcium first goes and replenishes the stores in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This calcium also goes on the sarcolemma. This is the sarcolemma, plasma membrane of the cardiac muscle cell. This calcium goes out via calcium sodium exchanger. Now the sodium is increased in the cytoplasm. The sodium goes out via sodium potassium exchanger. Via sodium potassium exchanger. So this is how the relaxation now takes place. This is how the relaxation now takes place. This extra cellular, this extra cellular fluid calcium it comes inside the cytoplasm it comes inside the cytoplasm where these channels these are voltage gated calcium channels these are voltage gated calcium channels this is what i taught you so far this is the theory part when an action potential passes over the cardiac muscle membrane the action potential spreads to the interior of the cardiac muscle fi fiber along the membranes of the t tubules so action potential comes it goes inside via these t tubules via these t tubules Clearly, the T tubule action potential in turn act on the membranes of the longitudinal sarcoplasmic tubules to cause the release of the calcium ions into the muscle sarcoplasm from sarcoplasmic reticulum through rhinodine receptor channels, which implies there is release of calcium due to this action potential into the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm also known as sarcoplasm. Sarcoplasm. So there is a release of calcium, clearly, and that calcium causes the contraction. That calcium causes the contraction. These calcium ions now produce muscle contractions. And this mechanism of excitation contraction coupling is same as that in skeletal muscles. So, like that in skeletal muscles, these calcium cause contraction. In addition to these calcium ions that are released into the sarcoplasm from the cisternae of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, calcium ions also diffuse into the sarcoplasm from extracellular fluid through voltage dependent calcium channels present in the membranes of the T tubules. So, these voltage gated calcium channels, which are present in T tubules, these cause the entry of the calcium from extracellular fluid into the cytoplasm. Into the cytoplasm. So far is clear. Now this calcium which is inside and this calcium which is inside th this calcium causes contraction this calcium causes contraction so calcium ions in the sarcoplasm then interact with troponin to initiate cross bridge formation resulting in contraction clearly now moving on to the next point now moving on to the next point this calcium for this calcium present in the extracellular fluid to go inside there should be abundant calcium in extracellular fluid there should be abundant calcium in extracellular fluid. It is done by these mucopolysaccharides. It is done by these mucopolysaccharides. Inside in the T tubules, there are mucopolysaccharides. These mucopolysaccharides are negatively charged. They hold this positively charged calcium. So there is abundant calcium in the T tubules, this T tubules, which is a part of extracellular fluid. So there is abundant calcium in the extracellular fluid, which is ready to go inside when the action potential arrives. When the action potential arrives, and this calcium is very important for the contraction for the contraction of the skeletal muscle cell of the skeletal of the sorry of the cardiac muscle cell of the cardiac muscle cell. Clearly, so these mucopolysaccharides hold calcium. Now, last point. This calcium is very important for the contraction of the cardiac muscle cell because the sarcoplasmic reticulum is not very well developed as in, in skeletal mu in cardiac muscle cell. This sarcoplasmic reticulum is not well developed in cardiac muscle cell, clearly. So this calcium is very little from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So majority of the calcium comes from the extracellular fluid. So this extracellular fluid calcium is important for the contraction of the cardiac muscle cell, clearly. So its importance is so much if we place a heart in a calcium free medium so if if this is a heart if we place in a calcium free medium that means there is no calcium in extracellular fluid so no calcium comes inside there will be soon there will be time the heart will stop beating what i am saying a heart placed in a calcium free solution will quickly stop beating so when there is no calcium in the extracellular fluid heart will stop beating because there is there is no entry of calcium and this calcium is very little and this calcium is very little so this is this calcium is very important for the contraction of the heart muscle cell so now the theory part without the calcium from the t tubules the strength of the cardiac muscle contraction would be reduced considerably because the sarcoplasmic reticulum of a cardiac muscle cell is less well developed than that of skeletal muscles the sarcoplasmic reticulum is not well developed in cardiac muscle cell so the contraction mainly depends on calcium from the extracellular fluid calcium from the extracellular fluid another point Inside the T tubules is a large quantity of mucopolysaccharides that are electronegatively charged and bind an abundant stores of calcium ions, keeping them available for the diffusion to the interior of the cardiac muscle fiber when a T tubule action potential appears. Really, so these mucopolysaccharides they hold calcium so that there is abundant calcium in the T tubules to go inside to go inside of the cytoplasm. Now, the strength of the 
contraction of cardiac muscle depends to great extent on the concentration of calcium ions in the extracellular fluid. In fact, a heart placed in a calcium free solution will quickly stop beating. Clearly, so without this calcium, the heart will stop beating. This is the physiological property number sixth. What was this property? This property was cardiac muscle requires calcium in the extracellular fluid to contract. This is that calcium. Very important calcium. Very important calcium. If this calcium is not present, heart heart will stop beating. Heart will stop beating. Now this is the guyton, and this is the diagram given guyton. Clearly, action potential comes, calcium goes out through ranodine receptors, calcium comes here through, through these voltage-gated calcium channels. You will, you know, study this. Remember this, it's very easy. 